think the uh, I think the mics in this country are Salafis. They don't like to celebrate me live. I know what I'm doing. Is that better? No one hear me? No. No? Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll hold it. I'll hold it. So what was I saying? The mic is a Salafi. <laughs> no, before the mic, before the mic became a Salafi, what was I saying? MashaAllah. I think I'm going to go home now because you're not listening to me. So there's no point in being here, right? Yeah. Okay. So what was I saying? Yes. Right. So the prophet's birthday. Sorry, what was it? What did you say? Yes. Cell phone. See, he was listening. Nobody else was listening. He was listening. Alhamdulillah. So. You all have mobile phones, right? And those that don't, you will have soon. What do you do when the mobile phone battery dies? <coughs> you charge it. What do you do when the battery goes low? You put it in charge. Why? Because the source for the battery is electricity. The source for the battery is electricity. So just like everything has a source, your source is your connection with Rasulullah So you have come here to refresh that. Why? Because your Iman, everyone knows what your Iman is, your faith rests upon Rasulullah Without Rasulullah you have no faith. So you have come today to refresh your connection with Rasulullah to strengthen your Iman. Straightforward so far. Let me explain what I mean by Iman. Why, what do I explain? Let me explain it to you. How do you become a Muslim? What is the first thing that you must do? You have to read? Shahada. Somebody tell me the translation. What, translate the Shahada for me. What does it mean? Sorry, are you there, witness? I bear witness? Okay, 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 okay. I, I, you're almost Muslim, Alhamdulillah, I know. Right, so you bear witness to what? That there is no God but Allah. Right? If I said to you that I bear witness that pigs fly, if I said to you I bear witness that pigs fly, what would you say to me? The first question you would say, well the first thing you'd probably say is go, to, go and see a psychiatrist. But you would say, have you seen a pig fly? You would say, have you seen a pig fly? And I would say, no, I haven't. Then you would say, well how can you bear witness to the fact that pigs fly? Isn't it? How do you bear witness to something? Have you seen that? Has anybody in here seen Allah? No. So how do you bear witness? On what basis do you say that I bear witness? Iman. 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 But you, you're making a statement. You're, you're making a very clear statement. You're not saying, you're not saying I believe there is one God. You're saying I bear witness that there is one God. There's a difference. Iman would be if you said, I believe there's one God, fine. That's your Iman, Iman bil ghayr, Iman, iman and, uh, faith in the, in the unseen. But what you are saying, what you are saying, that I bear witness to the fact that there is one God. Who in here has, but none of you have seen Allah? So how do you bear witness? Because you accept the testimony of Rasulullah who told you there was one God? Rasulullah told you there was one God. Why? Because as my honorable colleague said before, when Rasulullah descended to the heavens and got to Sidratul Muntaha and Jibreel said, Ya Rasulullah, I cannot go any further. I cannot go any further. Why? Because my entire presence will perish 
Because the entire universe ends at this point. Our Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Oh Jibreel, your reality can't exist in that reality, but my reality can exist anywhere. Why? Because I existed before anywhere existed. Because I existed before there was time. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa walks past Sidratul Muntaha to a place where there is no place, to a time where there is no time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kif ya Muhammad. Oh Muhammad, stop. Oh Muhammad, stop. why? Inna rabbuka yusalli alayhi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh Muhammad, stop. Stop where you are. So that your Lord can recite Salat of Salam upon you. SubhanAllah. Your Lord can recite, and then there are people who say, when we recite Salat of Salam, it's wrong. Allah recites Salat of Salam upon his beloved. But anyway, that's a different topic. But then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam met with Allah, spoke with Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa tells us, Ma'oha ila abdihi ma'oha, that we told him whatever we told him. It was a secret. We're not going to reveal it to you. So your faith links directly with the connection of Rasulullah That is why you are here today. But I want to give you a slightly different perspective on this because it is very important for you to understand this concept that your creation, your presence and the purpose of your creation links directly to Rasulullah I told you that your, your faith, your Iman links directly to Rasulullah but your purpose and the purpose of your being here today and the purpose of your being on this earth links directly to Rasulullah Please pay attention. Please pay, pay attention. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to create mankind, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to create mankind, the angels raised a question. They said, Oh Allah, why are you going to create these people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa is So that we can rule over the people 
with that which is right, but we, we can do justice over the people, on the people, for that, with that which is right. Yes? But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says, but don't use your own desire. Sorry, la Allah says, don't use your own desire. So we are created as leaders. But you, O oh Allah, you're saying, don't use your own desire to do justice. Don't use your own desire to do justice. How many parents do we have in the room? Oh, come on. <laughs> a lot. Let me, let me see a parent. Show up. I'm a parent. Right. Who's got more than one child? Right. So, if you had two, you had two of your children, they have an argument. They come to you and they say, Mom, Dad, we've had a fight. You decide who's right. You would listen to what they've had to say and you would rule and give judgment in accordance with how you feel. What you feel is right. Correct? Yes? So if you felt your son, let's just say it was a son and daughter, you felt your son was right, you would say, look, you would say to your daughter, look, he's right. Yeah? Unless it was my, my father just used to have, me and my brother, as a side note, we used to annoy him so much. We used to, may Allah give him so much reward for bearing with us as children. We were, honestly, we were really bad. He used to get sick and tired of both of us. So one day we both came up to him. We said it was him, it was him. You know what my dad made us do? He said, right, stand in front of each other. He said, you slap him and you slap him. <laughs> After that day, we never went back to my dad. <laughs> never went back. We never went back. I mean, now if you, if you do that in the UK today, you get arrested. But back in those days, it was okay. Anyway, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La tattabi hawa. Don't do justice in accordance with your own desire. So what do we do? What shall we do? If we can't do justice with our own desire, what shall we do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, you know what? Your desire is corrupted. Your desire takes you away from me. Your desire is the desire of shayateen. The nafs is prone to infiltration. So you may think you're doing justice, but you may follow your own desire for your own personal benefit. You may follow your own hawa. You may follow your own nafs. That's why I don't want you to use your desire. If you truly want to do justice, then you use the desire of my beloved. Say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You do justice in accordance with the desire of my beloved. Why? Because wa ma So Allah says, don't use your desire, use the desire of my beloved. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So your purpose in life is to? Your purpose, you are created as representatives of Allah, as leaders on this earth. Why? So that you could do justice over the people. And how do you do justice? By using the desire of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And how do you know the desire of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How do you come to know the desire of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Because you maintain the connection with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The more further away you go from your power source, the less battery you have within you. And eventually you will die. And you will die empty handedly. You will die. And then to recharge you is going to be even more difficult. But rest assured you will be recharged. One way or the other. But you would rather become recharged in this world with the connection of Rasulullah. 
You would rather become recharged in this sukkah with the connection of Rasulullah in this world. Let me give you an example of somebody who was charged. Somebody who was charged by the connection of Rasulullah You want to hear an example of that person? Yeah. yeah? The example is of Shaykh Khuda Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Jalkadeen. Shaykh Khuda, for those that don't know, means Lion of Allah. Sayyidina Ali, Hazrat Ali, this was their name. Hazrat Ali's name was Shaykh Khuda. And one day, Hazrat Ali was stood there. And a man walked up to Sayyidina Ali. And he came to Sayyidina Ali. He said, Oh Ali, I've heard that people tell me that Rasulullah said that Ana Madinatul Ali wa Aliyun Babuha. That we've heard that Rasulullah is the city of knowledge. And Ali, you are the door to that city? Is this correct? Is this right? And say, look at the response of Sayyidina Ali. Humility. Of course Sayyidina Ali knew that he, that Rasulullah said, but because he was praising Ali, Sayyidina Ali said, Messenger, no, no, Rasulullah. And the man said, well, fine. If that is the case, then let's put this to the test. If you are the door to that city, then tell me, O oh, Ali, where is Jibreel? Where is Jibreel? Where is Jibreel Alayhisselam? Where is the Archangel Jibreel? Has it an issue? He said, I don't know. What kind of question is that? If I said to you, where is Superman? Can somebody tell me where Superman is? But Satan Ali said, no. Satan Ali said, you've asked me the question. And the shan, the prerogative, the honor of being a student of Rasulullah means that when you ask a question, it is answered. It is answered. Why? Because in that family, they don't know how to turn people away. When you go to that family, they don't know how to turn people away. It's not within their DNA. If you go with a request, you are sure to be granted that request. So, Sayyidina Ali said, I don't know the answer, but give me one second. And Hazrat Ali closes his eyes. He closed his eyes for a split second and then he opens his eyes. And then he says, Oh, young man, you asked me where Jibreel is? And I didn't know the answer. So I closed my eyes and he says, I swear by Allah that the eye of Ali has circulated the heavens. The eye of Ali has circulated the earth. And the eye of Ali has circulated every inch of this universe. And the eye of Ali could not find Jibreel. So the eye of Ali concludes either you are Jibreel or I am Jibreel. And indeed the man was Jibreel in the form of a man. But this is through the connection with Rasulullah Whatever you do in your life, remember, always maintain that connection. Doesn't matter what it is you do, you maintain that connection. Because remember, whatever you are, it is because of Rasulullah Whatever mercy you have, it's because of Rasulullah Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that if I wasn't going to create my beloved, I wouldn't have even created you. If I wasn't going to create him, I wouldn't have even created you. So whatever it is that you do, an alim is an alim because he studies the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An alim is an alim because he studies the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A doctor is a doctor because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought science to this world. A lawyer is a lawyer because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought justice to this world. Doesn't matter who you are, wherever you are, in whatever shape or form in your life you are, your connection is with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Without that connection, you are absolutely nothing and you cannot continue. And the best way to maintain that connection? The best way to maintain that connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It's very simple. It's very, very simple. 
Wherever you are, whatever you do, just keep reading Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that that person who recites the most rules upon me will be closest to me on the day of judgment. So that is your purpose of celebrating Milan. You are here to recharge your battery. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your coming, accept my coming, and keep our batteries charged with the love and the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Before I finish, right at the beginning I asked a question and I'm going to answer it now. Right at the beginning I said Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is the source to the entire creation. Yes? Does anyone remember that or was it too far back? Yeah. Huh? You remember, right? Huh? You want to know the answer to that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is the source of the universe. Why? Because on the night of Mehraj, on the night of Mehraj, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa left the universe, what happened to the universe? What happened to the universe? Come on! What happened to the universe? The universe stood still. The universe stopped. The universe froze. Why? Because just like you take the battery out of a watch and the watch stops working, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the power source of the universe was taken out of the realms of the universe. And the universe stopped working. And it continued from exactly where it left off when the Rasulullah returned to this world. Are we recharged? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have words to explain the presentation of our sheikhs this evening. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed blessed us that we have been here and they are here with us. And it's really inspiring that we have heard so much from them. And all of us know that we have numerous functions. The Ashura function, the Laylatul Barat function, the Yom Manabi function, the Laylatul Qat function. And it's for the first time in so many years that we are so quiet and so patient. Indeed, or any one of you can testify to that for me. Because we are very attentive. And the words, I doubt we are able to explain how happy we are that we have our two sheikhs with us here this evening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and reward them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to grant them knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let their journey be successful. And let their knowledge that they share with us be of success for us also. So, Sheikh, I wish to thank you and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the knowledge and the wisdom that he has granted to you so that you can share it with us here this evening. My dear brothers and sisters, while our President General for the Anna Katrina Islamic Complex is trying to shun the appreciation of the organization. It is difficult to not to say how much we appreciate the effort that they have made to have these two shapes for us here. And I want to open the request and invitation that whenever they have learned its color, we will be gladly like to be serviced by them so that we can improve our knowledge and recharge our battery, our feet so that on the day of reckoning we will be very close to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not have to judge us but to put us in paradise so my dear brothers and sisters, I want to once again thank our Sheikh for being here. Guys, continue here by a super
right? A number of people have been taking their lives in and around the even on the way now. I want to shakes the flow of light from an Islamic perspective. So a very high suicide rate at the moment. And what is the solution for that from an Islamic perspective? Is that, is that correct? Was, yeah. that the, was that the question? I, I, we would want yes. to know from an Islamic perspective what Islam says about suicide. Okay. Uh, suicide is haram, um, uh, and there's several uh, hadiths on this. I don't think it's disputed this issue. The suicide itself is haram. And in fact, there are several, several narrations that that person who commits suicide, then you cannot read his janazah. His funeral prayer is not read because he has taken his own life. It's such a big sin that you can't, have, you can't do the wow for his forgiveness or her forgiveness. Um, and there are other narrations as well that that person who commits suicide, then that person will, con that fate will, con they will continue to feel the pain of that commit, commit suicide. They will continue to repeat the actions of committing suicide all the way until the day of judgment. Um, so, uh, suicide, quite frankly, is haram, um, uh, and the, 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 it's as simple as that, really. But the, in, in terms of the, um, in terms of a solution for suicide, then suicide um, comes directly from uh, issues of uh, depression, uh, and depression is something that science cannot understand, and science hasn't been able to understand. And this isn't a dig at science. It's, Simply, it's out, outside the remit of science. Science uh, has openly admitted that it doesn't understand evolution and that it can't uh, attribute uh, or diagnose the uh, prognose depression rather um, at all. Why? Because depression is not a illness of the mind. It's not an illness of the body. Depression is an illness of the soul. It's, it's actually a spiritual issue that, that needs to be dealt with. It's when somebody becomes so far from what they are meant to be doing, uh, that there is a limited connection between the soul and the body, uh, without complicating matters too much. In terms of a cure for depression, then although this isn't an official cure, uh, that, you know, that I'm prescribing, so I don't want anybody to take this, uh, you know, to the doctors tomorrow morning and say, you know, Huzayma, you know, propose this. Um, but uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, Allah is the great light that's man in the Gulu that surely the uh, heart finds rest in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it, it's always good to do zikr of Allah in the heart, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart, and at the root tree, reading salatu salam upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even if it's in your heart, even if it's just there, there's so many fazal, so many benefits from it that are uh, insurmountable and uncountable benefits uh, that will ensure anybody who does have those tendencies uh, who does feel uh, depressed, who does feel down about things, can inshallah recite uh, these things. I think the Sheikh has something to add, inshallah, Aziz. Alhamdulillah, uh, my Sheikh has uh, sort of covered it very, very well. Um, I'm just told perhaps um, one or two things that I've come across. Um, uh, with respect to uh, depression, uh, what, uh, a very great cure, as sort of uh, noted by the Sufi and the ulama, they say the ayat al Qursi, this is very, very powerful for you to recite. And another thing which has been taken from uh, the tafsir of Ibn Kathir.